Opposite of lose. Oh, win. <laughs> win. This is my husband, Jared. It's my wife, Jenny. This is Cherry Pie Cottage. Episode 47. What? What you drinking, babe? We're getting crazy. The national drink of Texas, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. For those of us that don't drink alcohol. <laughs> yep. Um, otherwise, they might say what? Like Budweiser or something like that? No. no Lone, Lone no, Star. Lone Star. Yeah. Duh. See Lone how much Star. I know I don't drink. So, we live in Lubbock, Texas. Yes. We love it, even though springtime's coming, which means dirt storms. Yes. Because we're so flat up here. Um, welcome to all of our, to our new followers. We've gained quite a few lately. Have we? Yes. Sweet. Our new friends. Welcome. And welcome back to all of our returning viewers. I almost said old viewers again. They're not old. No. Well, they are in the sense that they've been around for a while, but they're not old in age. Well, some of them might be. I don't know. I'm not going to put that on. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about okay. that. Okay. So, babe, what's been going on? Um, Not a lot. We watched the um, State of the Union with yep. the kids. Yes, we and did. And that's all we're going to say yep. because we don't get political. Nope. Um, LTC practices are still going on. So, Sundays are busy, 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 busy. Um, Just a bunch of little bees. We did our taxes, y'all. Yep. We didn't owe anything. Yay! We're actually, we're actually getting a good return this year. Yes. Not well, as we good, usually not do. Oh, well, yeah, but not as good as when uh, I came back from Afghanistan. Yeah. That was a good return. No, the good return is when you got out of the military and you that got the too. rest of the money that they had taken out and they weren't supposed to. That one, too. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, I actually made it to where we lost some of our tax return because of how much I yeah, way made to go. this year. <laughs> way to go. I'm, I'm proud. So, not proud. I am thankful to all of y'all because y'all made that possible. Yes. So, he said I, I need to, he needs me to like slow down a little bit because we're also losing <laughs> a tax credit this next year because our daughter will be 18. So, we don't get to claim her as a child anymore. We can claim her as a dependent but we won't get the child tax credit. Right. So, yeah. But we didn't owe anything. That is always a bonus. Yes. It's always a bonus so, to not owe something. And we still got a pretty decent return. So, mm -hmm. that's always good. Anything else going on? No. We have a cow going on. No. Yeah. So, and it does... I am so sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yep. Um, we have a cow going on. It does not have to just be knit. It can be crochet. It can be weaving. Just it has to be for yourself. So <clears throat> you don't even have to finish it. You could just go in and chatter underneath the post in our Facebook group or the thread in our Ravelry group. There is no chatter or faux thread. It's all in one. <laughs> You good? Sorry, I tried to stifle it. <laughs> and it went up your and nose. It went up my nose. <laughs> oh, sorry, y'all. He burped but kept his mouth closed. Yes. <laughs> and it burned his nose. So bet you won't do that again. You will, but. Mm. So anyways, we are gonna draw prizes from both our Facebook and our Ravelry. So whichever platform you prefer. Um, go in and chatter. You can tell us what you're knitting. You can comment on other people's. You can show us what you finished. Can they do both? Yes. So what happens if the same person gets drawn on both? Well, we draw. Okay. So we're not going to do prize. The same person's not going to get two prizes. Okay. So, but anyways, y'all go join the fun. Um. One of the prizes is a scan of yarn, of course, and a bag from moi. Are you going to be donating anything? I think so. Okay. I'm not going to say what, though. Mm -hmm. 
So there won't be any beaver nuggets because we haven't had a chance to go to, a, we haven't been to a Bucky's, so we don't have any beaver nuggets. Because mm. the last time we went to a Bucky's, those prizes have already been given away and we ate the other ones. So, yeah. Um, but again, if you are a designer or maker or anything and you would like to donate, that would be fantastic. Just um, message me either um, on Instagram or through Etsy. So I'm Cherry Pie Cottage. I mean, at the beginning you saw what my Instagram handle is, but it's also down below in the description. So that would be fantastic and would help us out a lot. So, but, are you at a stopping point? Oh yeah, I'm just okay. ribbing right now. So. It's time to move on because there is no more news. I know that was super quick. I just like Very flew through it because you didn't banter with me like you usually well, do. Well, I am so sorry. <laughs> do you have anything to add to what's been going on? Um, no, not really. I'm, I'm feeling like a news broadcaster right now. I'm wearing my pajama pants under the table. <laughs> we both are. Well, I don't call my pajama pants, call them house pants because yeah. I wear them around the house. Jim Jams. Well, they're really your house pants. Neither one of us really sleep in pajama mm -hmm. pants. So, because that's what y'all wanted to know. that's more information than y'all wanted to know about <laughs> us. So, now it's time for... Fall party! party. Try to shake them. I'm like out of the screen. Why? The camera is... You mean scooch? No, because now you're always out there. We can okay. we can pretend we can act like we love each other, you know. So it's time for faux party. What do you need to say? Do you do you have a faux? I do not. I barely have a whip. Look at me. You've got. Twi you've got. <laughs> Apparently, I'm tweed today. Yeah. You got little nids. You don't. But I you're know. the one that's been having foes I lately. Know. I know. Hey babe, do you have any foes? I do, I have two big giant foes. I'm wearing one, y'all. Look, I finished it. I still need to go back and re-block it for this one, but I've been wanting to wear it. And I used the Knit Picks for the gray, but y'all look, it's a good economical yarn and it's super soft and everything, but after like, this is what, been two wears maybe? And it's already fuzzing. So be prepared to have a gleaner. Basically, so it's a great yarn. I do love it, but and see his did this my portage does this mm. it's just Just beware. I mean it doesn't bother me too much But I definitely need to get a gleaner especially after my portage, but yeah see mm -hmm. I've already got nubs it's ridiculous. But other than that I do I do love nitpicks and I will <clears throat> So what pattern is this? This is the throwback by um, Drea Renee Knits. I was gonna say that. Why? Well, you, when you were like thinking, I was I was thinking, oh, I think it was Drea Renee Knits, mm -hmm. and then you said it. So why didn't you say it? I, because I I figured I was also wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I will stand up and show y'all. See, so you might get to see my house pants. Nope, but no, no house pants. So I. Love it, except for this. It The way that it is knit, it feels like it should be one of those drapier ones, but the way the collar is, it doesn't allow that. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I am thinking I either wanna put in a zipper or just get a shawl pin or something and to hold it, you or- could, You could go full librarian on it and just put a button at the top and button that and then the rest of it's open. I don't have a buttonhole though, I didn't put buttonholes in. Oh, wow. But I've also thought about just taking this corner and like tacking it down. So then when it falls to the side, it doesn't look weird. So, but I think if I just like tack that corner down, it would be okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I probably won't do any of those. I'll probably just deal with it because I don't want to mess with it anymore. But, not only do I have this one done, I finished Haley's Soldatna. Oh, and 
and she loves it. It has been, the ends are woven in, it has been washed and blocked, and she's going to wear it tomorrow. She is so, so excited and it fits her so cute. We did go with a crop, but that's because that's what she wanted and she's gonna wear a tank top underneath it. So her belly will not be showing. But she absolutely loves this sweater, which makes my heart happy. So she is the first person, well, besides baby knits, the first adult size that I have knit that was not for me. So, and I already, we've already been talking about the next sweater for her. And the next sweater for me. So I only have one sweater on the needles now. Hey, so what what yarns did you use in this one? Oh yeah, I used cherry pie. This is Soldatna by Boyland Networks. My favorite, like, sweater designer ever. I love color work. But anyways, the yarn is by me, Cherry Pie Cottage. Um, I used the green is $5 bill, yo. The main color, the gray, is on tweed, and it is concrete. The green is on DK100, as is the white, and it's just a plano, undyed. And then the purple is tweed, purple. and it's purple. So, but she's going to wear it tomorrow, and I will get some pictures of her in it. So, so excited about that. Do you have anything else to add to faux party? I do not. Well then, it's time for our new segment. We have a new book. What is our new segment called, dear? Talk Texan. <laughs> you have to stop knitting, dearest. I do. So, we're going to teach y'all how to... <clears throat> talk Texan. Talk Texan. Okay. So, we're going to read the starters. Gather around, children. It's story time. <laughs> All right, so this quote is by Texas columnist Molly Ivins, or Ivins, 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 something, Ivins. I do love the state of Texas, but I consider that a harmless perversion on my part and discuss it only with consenting adults. Well, that's kind of rude. Yeah. Why is that in here? I don't, I don't know. know. You should show them how these are spelled before okay. you pronounce them. So, we ha it has three town names here. Let's see. And if you were at Knit City. In the lobby. In the lobby. You, if you were knitting in the lobby, you don't get to participate in this. <laughs> um, the first one, right? Right there. That's a town. And then town and town. How okay. do y'all pronounce How do y'all pronounce those? We'll give you some time to try to figure it out. Do, 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 okay, that's enough do, time. Do. Oh, <laughs> rude. You didn't right. want to get through the Jeopardy song. So, now you're going to hear how to pronounce them. Imagine you arrived in Waxahachie, Alvarado, or Mejia, and can't even pronounce the name of the town, let alone understand the answer to where's the best barbecue around. Imagine your embarrassment when your new Texas neighbor or host or family member speaks to you and you cannot understand what they are saying. You can feign deafness and perhaps get out of, out of a momentarily sticky situation, but what about the next time? Fortunately, you are holding in your very hands the answer to your dilemma. Are you deaf or are you ignorant? Okay. That makes no sense. I don't know. Speak Texan in 30 minutes or less can make you understandable to Texans and be able to understand any Texan, no matter where in the world y'all might be. There, there, you have just learned your first Texan word. Y'all, a sometimes collective noun, meaning the both of you, or all of you, or just you by yourself, depending on the situation. <laughs> now she's going to take over. Yes, it says, It is simple to add to this word to greatly enlarge your Texan vocabulary. For instance, y'all eat... Y'all eat yet? Yeah, so have you folks eaten? Y'all fixing to dance? You folks going dancing? How you been? How have you been? Singular in this case, been doing. See, it's easy if you just know how, and this book will show you how in an easy to master style. Read it and learn. Read this book, and if you don't sound like a Texan, you might could just understand one at least. And remember, you can always tell a Texan, just can't tell them too much. Mm -hmm. So, that was for starters. 
Now we have chapter one. Let's see, let me read this quote to make sure it actually makes sense. Okay, yes, it does. So this one is the Great Divide, which doesn't make sense to me because I think that that divide should be further over on Texas. Um, if you've ever driven across Texas, you know how different one area of the state can be from another. Take El Paso. It looks as much like Dallas as I look like Jack Nicholas. It's true. And that was a quote by Lee Trevino, pro golfer. Yeah. So that's what they're saying is that this the side that we're on is got twang and the other side is draw. But and, we, and the Great Divide is simply I-35. Yes. Everything else, that, yes, that, that applies. But for this, it doesn't because me and him both have a draw and I grew up in this area. So first, some geographical caveats. Texas is so big, it has at least two distinct dialects, the East Texas drawl and the West Texas twang. So, I'm gonna let you read that. Okay, so the drawl is characterized by a slow elongation to words, usually adding a syllable. For instance, ma'am comes out ma'am, and help becomes hey, it, hey yelp, is what it says. I have never once said, hey, yelp, nope. whenever I need help. But we've also never signed this other one. No, may may maybe ma'am. Ma'am. We don't say ma'am. We do say ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Ma'am. The twang, on the other hand, is more nasal and sometimes short words to ma'am help, ma'am hep. We're reading this for the first time, so yeah. ma'am hep. We say ma'am help, so maybe we do have a little bit of... When you are in the middle of Texas, you may have problems deciding which to utilize in your quest for information. And you must always be careful not to get your twang caught in your draws. You do better with the twang. Can I do the draws? <laughs> sure. Okay. I'm... So, here are some examples of draw speak. Arrest. To be approached. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I knew draw just fine. It's the twang I have problems with. Um, to be apprehended by the constabulary. Constabulary. Or, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, this one is round thing often thrown. A ball. Um, stuff on your head. Hair. Which I do actually say it like that. Yeah, you, you really do have the draw. <laughs> um, big thing with shops and eating places. Teenage girls especially love to hang out in them. So a mall. And opposite of lose, we win. So there you go. That's you have arrest, ball, hair, mall, and <laughs> win. Win. <laughs> that was like super exaggerated of my normal accent, just so y'all could kind of get the point. So. All right. So now some some twang speak. Okay, so this is fencing medium with sharp points scattered throughout, designed to keep cattle in or out, also known as the devil's rope. Bob wire. Bob wire. It's, it's barb wire, but bob wire. Bob wire? Bob wire. Oh, okay, maybe I do have a little bit of a twang, too. Yeah, it, I've got a mix. My mom's from Kansas and my dad's from West Texas, y'all. So the national, state, or local operating authority, even made up of executive, judicial, and legislative branches, often. also often, sorry, also used as part of an invective, dag government. So it's government. Government. Head law enforcement official in most Texas counties, the sheriff. Sheriff. Maybe I do have I, a I, point. see. I feel like this book was not written by somebody from Texas. Or we just can't read words that are spelled out like the way that they're actually pronounced. No. Maybe that's the problem. So, but it's Bob Wire. Bob Wire. Government. And sure. sure. See, the way I'm saying it. Government. 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 Go Maybe it's just because it's actually written out. That's yeah. what's throwing me off. That's what's throwing both like, of us off. If if you just hear it, you're like, oh yeah, that's what he's that's what they're saying. Yeah, but, but it's barb wire. Barbed wire. But I call it bob wire. Yeah. <laughs> you might be a Texan if someone you know has used a football schedule to plan their wedding date. Yeah. You do want a Texan to say you're happy as a gopher in soft dirt. I've never heard that nope. phrase. 
You don't want a Texan to say you're older than two trees. Never heard that one. <laughs> you do want a Texan to say you'll do to run the river with. Okay, this is somebody that was like raised down by South Texas. I, I, see, I, I don't know. That, I, I, some of them I'm like, okay, run the river with. You're thinking float in the river. Yeah. Down in the hill country. But happy as a gopher in soft dirt. I don't know. Never. But that, that is the end. So that's chapter one. So why don't you try saying some of the the drawl? How do you say arrest? Okay. Arrest. Ball. Ball. Hair. Mall. Win. But we win. We win. <laughs> Cubs win. <laughs> See, I don't think there's actually a distinct difference no. between twang and drawl but we do know since he was raised in south See, texas i yeah. have more of an accent than he does and it comes out heavier the more i think about it see let me, let me see don't write in my don't write in the book oh you're gonna show you're gonna yeah, correct them out well no no i was i was just gonna put a little dot like right there and then a little dot right there you can't hardly see the dot at the top okay so there's a little dot above the T in twang. That's where she's from. Mm -hmm. And then a dot next to the L in drawl. That's where I'm from. Okay. That's about 10 hours apart. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, you put the dot on Corpus Christi instead of Houston. No. Corpus Christi's down down here. Oh. Houston's there. Okay. Well, see, I don't know much. I, I, I know the general area of <clears throat> South, yeah. South Texas. Just like I know the general area, I, I, he knows the general area of things up here, but I know where most of them exactly are. Yeah. So, I just think that the line needs to be more... There's really not a line. No, there's not. There's really not a line because going from East Texas to West Texas, it's not like, you know, you cross a line and the accents change. No. It, it blends. Mm -hmm. It slowly blends from the, the draw into the twang. And you'll have twang over here, draw over there, draw, you know, twang, whatever. It, Unless you're from like Midland, Odessa, like true West Texas, then you're going to have more of that West Texas accent. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, I mean, you can hear, if you went straight from somebody from West Texas to somebody from like, Dallas, yeah, you're going to be able to hear the difference. Yeah. Because I have relatives that we all come together for my reunion, and I have West Texas, mm -hmm. and I have Dallas. And you can hear the difference, but it's still basically the same. Yeah. We all kind of sound like Hicks sometimes. <laughs> so. But, and he gets a kick out of it because my accent gets even heavier. Mm -hmm. See, even with the word accent. Yeah. Especially when you say the word accent. 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 <laughs> so. But let us know what you think of our new talk accent. Mm -hmm. We're, we'll get better at this, but again, we just got this book like today. It came in the mail today. Yeah. So, and apparently I can just say all the words. And if it's not mm -hmm. written down, then I can say it. See, I put an R in there. I when, when I say it, like... Right. Like government. Government. Yeah. But I put, I put a slight R in there before yeah. the M. Government. Yeah, government. 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 I can do it without the R. Government. Uh, the, without the R, it sounds weird. Yeah. But I do say Bob War. No, I do say Dad Gummit. Oh, yeah. I say Dad Gummit all the time. That, oh, yeah. That's my. Dad Gummit. That's my expletive. <laughs> okay. Er, well, crap. Dang. <laughs> Dang it. Um, I, I feel like Mater sometimes because I'm just like, Daggum! <laughs> Moving on. Not sure why Dad gummed it, but. I don't know. Probably because he lost his teeth. I don't know. But it's D A, not D A D. Daggum. So. Daggum. Yeah, so. the, D, the second D's there. No. Yes. Oh, there is a second D. Told you. I just say Dad Gummit. Yeah, you're saying the say second Dad. D. Yeah. yeah, it's Dad Gummit. Yeah. So, well, we hope y'all enjoyed <laughs> this because even uh, we can't even agree. Yeah. So it's 
it, the problem is, is it's written out. And yeah. if we just say it next time, we should just read the definition <laughs> see, and say it. See, here's the, here's the thing. The Texan accent is a lot like ancient languages. Okay. <laughs> because they didn't have writing. So everything was simply spoken. Yeah. And we and, have and, Spanish and French and German. Yeah. There's a lot of influences that went into creating English and also in creating Texas. Texas. So, I mean, te- y'all know why Six Flags is called Six Flags. It's because there were six different nations that ruled Texas yeah. at one point in time or another. So, Bet you they didn't know that te- um, Six Flags actually is originally from Texas. Yeah. And they just bought other parks, other yep. places. So the original is in Dallas, and I remember going there as a kid. The Fiesta, Texas? No, actual Six Flags is in Dallas. Well, Fiesta, Texas is Six Flags. Six Flags is Fiesta, Texas. Fiesta, Texas is in San Antonio. Oh, okay. See, I was was an Astral World kid. Which was also owned by Six Flags, but it was in Houston. Yeah. So, but no, the original Six Flags is in Dallas. So... Anyways, the more we talk about this book and the words, the heavier my accent's going to get. You watch. It's going to be fun. Yeah, he's looking forward to it. Right. So, now it's time for Whip, whip It. Whip, whip It, it good. good. What you whipping up, babe? Lots. 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 <laughs> not really. Um, <laughs> Everything. No, I'm not. That's the sad part. But I did cast all. I did, like, finish two giant projects. So... Um, I don't remember how far I got on this last time because I don't put a marker on and show and leave it or whatever. But this is my mosaic. I should probably put one on so y'all could see. Nope, it goes this way. Um, but yeah, there you go. I've started the little tents areas right there. Really? Right. Um, this is by Amanda Schwab. 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 Okay, Schwab. Whatever. But. Oh, wow. that's great. So there we go. Mosaica. Um, I am using Sweet Georgia Hedgehog and Let's Travel the Yarn. Yep, Sweet Georgia is the gray. These are all fingering weight bases. Hedgehog, and it is called Cheeky. And the gray was called Snowfall. And then the pink is by Less Traveled, and it is called, it was Fuchsia. And that one is a tweed base. So. Fun color to say. Fuchsia. 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 It's like but chartreuse. There you go. And this I've been working on slowly, but. I have tons of shawls that are cast on, which is why I'm not casting on any more shawls. Um, then I have a new cast on that I just, I had to. This is yarn from um, Knit City. One of them is. This is the 8th Avenue Wrap by Cozy Up Knits. My favorite designers. Which I tend to always want to cast on all of theirs, and I cast them on because I'm so excited to cast them on, and then they sit. So that's why I waited on this one. There's several other ones, like lots of others. But there's the beginning of it. Um, I This is Life in the Long Grass, and I think it was Silver Sky, maybe? I don't know. I've lost the tag somewhere. And then this one is seven mini skeins that I just wound into one cake because it would make it a lot easier. Um, this I got at Knit City, and it is sea tar. What's that? Sea turtle fiber arts, and it was the Pop Rock speckles, and there's seven of them. And like saw this, and I said that I was done for that day. We were just walking through and I saw those. I said, nope, it's a gradient mini skein set and they're speckled. 
So, yeah, had to. But, Whoops. anyways, so you can see the lace. I'm so excited. This is just the first color. It's so pretty. And this, like, silvery blue gray. Oh, so pretty. So that's what I have been working on the most lately. After I finished the sweaters, I picked this back up. I cast this on this week, so. But, do you have any other, like, cast-ons you're wanting to cast on soon that you want to talk about? That you need to go get the yarn for or whatever? Why? Talk about other ones or no? Why are you trying to get rid of me? I'm not. I'm just saying. <laughs> I've got two things I want to talk about. And if you want to run and get the, the Should yarn. Should I show the pattern that I picked for this? Yeah, probably. Oh, okay. Well, then I need to go do you want to go ahead and show your... Well, yeah, let me, let me go ahead and do this. I'm not going to yeah. show the pattern. We'll talk about the... the so... To I'm be not, cast on. Yeah, I'm working on a hat. Um, the, the pattern is out of a book, but it's not like an actual hat pattern. It's just a stitch pattern. Mm -hmm. that I'm using. There is a mystery to this though. Oh, it's the Japanese knitting. Yeah, okay, so there's, this is my ribbing. That That's all I've gotten done so far. The mystery, however, is that, I'm tangled here. I don't know what yarn I'm using. <laughs> okay. We bought this like three or four years ago. Yeah, so, this is the yarn. I don't know the maker, and I don't know the colorway. We know it's DK. Yeah. Um, and it's DK, it's like 100% Superwash Merino. So, just looking at this, if anybody knows or has an idea of what color this might be... It's not, we know it's not Hedgehog, and we know it's not Madeline Tosh, but it's another, like... Right, it's not Malabrigo. Bigger named Indie Book Dyer. Yeah, it's not Malabrigo. It might be Miss Babs. No, it's not. I know for I know What about for a Desert fact. Vista? It's not Desert Vista either. You've never had any Desert Vista, and Miss Babs, you always had to order. Right. And this was from an actual yarn store. You sure? Yes. Okay. Positive. Because it was that one that I loved to go to that was closed a lot of the times when we'd go to North Carolina, or go to Raleigh. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to just show y'all. Okay, that's how it knits up. And my Messalina cowl is knit out of this same yarn, I think. So, I, I'm at a loss because I, like I said, I can't remember mm -hmm. the maker or even the colorway. I can kind of see, like, the logo on the label, yeah. but I cannot and, place the name. And I know with yarn colorways you know there's so many that might look very similar it's hard to tell and this is like four years old too yeah but that's what i'm that's what i'm working on is a is a hat so. oh good grief we've been knitting for four years now yep and i have it in my my um oh who's the maker on this the silver shed bag my, my walking dead bag. I love the inside because it's like blood splatters. It's keep, awesome. Keep talking. So. Because I just thought of something that I want to look up real quick. I have this awesome zipper pull added on there. Uh, Haley made this for me her first year at camp. And she brought it back to me and I put it on one of my knitting bags. So. It's kind of like knitting, I guess. Kind of, yeah. These things, these things were like all the rage um, when we were in camp. Every yes. everybody was making. You, I, I would go and get like five yards of two colors, <laughs> and I mean the thing is literally fifteen feet long, mm -hmm. and you just sitting there the whole time under the table. You had to do it under the table, like oh, during, yeah. during singing time. You didn't sit. You didn't sit on the on the, the front side of the table. You sit on the back yeah. side, so you could. Yeah, so you could work on it under the table. You know. Well, I'll still I'm sure. I'm sure the adults knew what was going on. They had to have known. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, everybody was making them back then. So, I don't know if everybody is still, but. I was looking up because our two year pot anniversary is coming up, guys. <laughs> I just. That just made me think of it. 
Okay. February 19th, 2018 was when we uploaded our very first episode. Oh, yeah. Has it? And we've only done 47 episodes. <laughs> but we've had some lives in there, too. Yeah, and 52 divided by 2 is 26. Right, but so we should be at episode 52 by now. We're on 47, so, I mean, there's a few. We haven't skipped many. No. So, but, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So... Happy anniversary, babe. Oh, totally. It's early. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I was just thinking about that. So, our next time we would have been doing this for two years. I nope. can't believe it. And the fact that people not only have the ones that started with us are still around for the most part, mm -hmm. but more people have decided to continue to follow our shenanigans. <laughs> and it's... Because of this, we have made a lot more friends. Um, my shop has done really well. Thank you to all of y'all. Yes. Um, we got to go to Knit City. That was fabulous. And we really hope we can go again this year. I say next year. We go to a, fe a yarn fest in like Europe somewhere. Yeah, okay, because... We go to Ireland. We can afford that with Haley's being being the first year in college. Totes. No. Um, but I will. How about we put up pre-orders for the Nightmare Before Christmas Halloween Advents on February 19th? Okay. Okay. Have you mentioned to people that you're doing that yet? Yes, we mentioned it on the last podcast, remember? Did we? So... We did. Yeah. I didn't write it down because it was like, you say so. should I, shouldn't I? Because Ginger, Kim from Ginger Snap messaged me. She goes, we're doing that too, but it's for Christmas. So I just wanted to make sure you knew we weren't <laughs> copying you. I was like, well, I'm pretty sure I'm not the first one to come up with this idea. Yeah. So it's whatever. So, but anyways, and it will be 12 minis and one full skein. Mm -hmm. Should we tell them what the full skein is going to be since they're going to open it first anyways? No. Why would they okay. open that one first? Or not real? I'm, I wasn't planning on like wrapping it. Mm. No. Okay. Not yet. Okay. I'm really excited about Let's it. Let's let though. it be a surprise. I'm so excited. Um. When you're dyeing the yarns, will you sing the Making Christmas song though? Making Christmas, making Christmas. Oh, you're helping me dye these by the way. Oh, okay. Making so. Christmas. Are you done? <laughs> making um, knitness, making knitness. Oh <laughs> Do you see what I live with? Um, we're still on whips, so I will talk more about this <laughs> in shop news. Um, do you need to go get that yarn or no? I don't. I don't know what yarn you're. Remember, you were discussing about. what you wanted to cast on. Yeah, and I cast something on. I know, the other thing you were wanting to cast on. Oh. Okay. Did you want to or not? I, I can, I mean. Okay. She's trying to get, you're trying to talk about something that you don't want me no, to No, I'm about. not. I'm just saying, if you don't want to, it's fine. Gonna, but I don't want to have to fill dead space. I'm going to go around the corner and listen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna let y'all see my Jim Jam pants, though. <laughs> In my JoJo bag with the Cozy Up Knits fabric, I, for Christmas, I knit Haley the mitts from the Comfy Cozy Trio. And I am now going to cast on the cowl for her. That's the plan. And the main color, all the colors are the same. This one, I think think he said was Savvy Skeins or maybe Yarn Carnival. I'll have to wait for him, but I know it's called Earl. I just can't remember the name of the dyer. And then the minis were the Poppy Yarn and Fiber. And it's like the neon bright ones. Um, it's the Color Palette Fraser Minis. So... But my plan is to knit her the cowl 
And then I'm going to take the rest and I'm going to knit her a headband. Or like one thick enough to go over her ears. So, see? What was the yarn dyer for this one? It's Earl. Yarn Carnival. Yarn Carnival. It's not Savvy Skeins? No. No, it wasn't Savvy Skeins. So it's Yarn Carnival. And y'all, this is like super, super soft. I'm so glad he decided he didn't want it because it was fingering weight yarn. Yeah. He held on to it for what, two years before something you finally like let me have it? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you want to go ahead and talk about yours or do you want me to talk sure. about mine? Okay. Talk about mine. So, here's my stash, y'all. I can't see it. Which is pretty good for him. So this is my stash. Oh, you still have that one you dyed. Yeah. So, the one she insisted on me going and getting is, I need another pair of socks because I only have six pairs. And you've really been into knitting socks. Yeah. So, I think this is going to be the next pair. And problem is I got to hold it double because it is fingering weight. It is Savvy Skeins in the Booma colorway. You have to say it like that. It's a rule. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm going to hold it double. This is uh, Savvy Skein Sensible Sock, 430 yards, 100 grams fingering, 80. It's an 80-20 super wash nylon blend on size one to three needles. So, I don't know if she still has this color available though. I don't know either. Um, I know when I got these, she posted that she had like four of them and I bought two of them. She moved. So. Yeah. I thought she only posted three and you bought two of them. No, I think it was four. Our dog's being weird. I'm trying to get a picture and she keeps moving every time I put the camera up. Oh, now she's not She's just weird. wallowing, that's all. But she's, she was laying there with one paw straight up and the other one curled. Yeah. <laughs> but. So I'm excited to see those. Those are like really bright colors, not yeah. ones you usually go for. No, but when she when she posted it, I was like, I have to have that yarn. And you still really so, like it. I you? do really like it. It's just, it's fingering, and I realized I don't do so well with fingering. Yeah, this he bought these before. Before I came to that realization. I think that's why you bought the two, because you figured that if you really didn't want to do fingering right, you could hold them together yeah. at least. Because she didn't have them on DK. And I'm really looking forward to figuring out what I'm going to do with this one. Yeah. My ginger snap. This is the Ice Dragon. I love the Ice Dragon one. Never, we never watched mm -hmm. Game of Thrones, but mm -hmm. I like the colorway. Our dog's making noises. Yeah. <laughs> Can I see that real quick? I think the reason why he likes this one so much is because this one... It looks like Kentucky Rain. Yeah, it looks very <laughs> similar to the color that he designed. Which, by the way, I think that whatever Kentucky Rain is left in the shop, that's it. I'm not dying it anymore. I'm retiring that one. Um, and whatever is left of Grape Aid that's in there is going to be retired too. So. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that's my cast on iris, I guess. Yeah. Is to be cast. To be cast. And then um, I have come to the conclusion that I sadly have to go down a size on my needles for my socks. So I ordered some new needles. Now, why do you have to go down a size? Because my socks are getting too loose. So because why don't my I just knitting. Knit because that hurts. My knitting is getting too loose. And mm -hmm. I don't want to go down a size because then that just messes up what I've already got memorized. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have my toe pattern memorized and I have my, like, I don't even need a pattern. I could just like, if I have the needles in the yarn, I can cast it on and go basically. So I didn't want to change this, um, the count because I do 64 stitches around toe up always. Mm -hmm. um, That's what I did on my last pair, didn't I? Mm -hmm. No, you didn't do it on a size one though. Oh, well, no, not on a size you did one. did it like on a size two or a one and a half. Might have been a two. I think it was either two or two and a half. One or the other. Yeah. Um, but I normally knit on a one. My socks are getting too, they're too loose now. So, do you see what size I bought? So, when these came in, I immediately said, okay, I need to cast on a pair of socks because I want to see. Well, my friend, Hesper, who lives here, um, 
I've gotten her into knitting. And she is typically a monogamous knitter. 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 Um, <laughs> but I told her, I said, I have a ton of self siping sock. Sock yarn. And I only ever use half of it. Because I like my socks tall. And it's, it's, and with a contrast, it is exactly 50 grams. I'm going to let her out real quick. Okay. Well, not exactly, but around. So like with the Cozy Knitters Advent, 24, 24 stripes with contrast heel, toes, and cuffs, and I used up 50 grams. So um, I pulled out all of my self-striping yarn, I took a picture of it, I sent it to her, and she picked the one I was hoping because I have been dying to cast this on since I got it months ago. Months ago. It's Kirby Werby. And it's her Space Cowgirl. <laughs> so excited to knit this one. They are not going to be matching. Because my, my <clears throat> striping socks do not match. <coughs> Unless I buy it from like the Cozy Knitter where it came already yeah. into perfectly matched. So, but. That was a fun pair of socks to knit. Yes. Are we going to buy it again if we next year? I think so. I have enough that I can knit Haley a pair of socks and Michael a pair of socks. So we're all going to have matching pairs of socks. I just need to actually cast them on because I could have them done in about two months if I just sit down and knit a stripe a day on a pair of socks and they would be done. I gave you more leftovers, right? Yes. Okay. And your contrast leftover too. Yeah. But for my contrast, which... This might blow out the camera. This is when we first started knitting and this color is going to make an appearance in the shop. So, I just, I don't know when. Soon. Good grief. <laughs> but it's gonna be perfect. Um. I had th thought about calling it pink pink because it's very, it's, it's pink pink. So what do y'all think? You think I should stick with pink pink? Well, you can't call it eye searing pink because somebody no. else already has that. You could call it eye melting pink. Yeah. Well, the one that calls it eye searing pink, she doesn't dye yarn anymore. Oh, well, but I don't want to feel like I'm copying her because this is, this is actually face, different from hers. Face melting pink. But here's my other question that I need y'all to answer. I think I could pull it off. Haley thinks I could pull it off. He's not so sure. I like a lot of pink. I want to knit a weekender and I want to get the worsted tweed base to test it out before I decide if I'm going to carry it in the shop. I want to dye it up the pink pink because for one, the, um, words the base the undyed base of tweed is more of like a gray it's not like a white white so like this is the base of undyed yarn tweed has got a kind of um it's darker it's like a gray which is why some of the colors on tweed come out darker but i thought with like the tweed bits breaking up the pink and in a weekender that is my next sweater plan. What do y'all think? I think I could do it if it's got the tweed in it and it's not just pink pink. And it's not like I want to dye my hair this pink I, I either. I think like a using that as color work, so like you have in here, mm -hmm. using that would be okay. But the entire sweater being made of that we'll see. would just, I think would just be too much. Okay. So this is kind of like, this is dyed, but it's just speckled. But that gray is like the base of the tweed. So this, on this, it would not be this eye searing. Mm -hmm. But y'all let me know because I really think I'm going to go for it. <laughs> or I have some DK tweed. So I can dye it up on the DK tweed and see how it looks. And put it in the shop and then decide before I dye a, a whole sweater's quantity for myself. But, yeah. 
I plan to put out some pinks, some different pinks. And my birthday is next month and the Wizard of Oz collection is coming back. There are three colors. Um, it's a twister. I do believe in spooks. And what was the other one? Oh, a horse of a different color. Those three are original. Those are all coming back, but there's gonna be two new colors that will be joining the party. Um, I, those will be coming back. They're gonna be on pre-order, um, but I will have some, some dyed to order. And I'm also gonna be doing mini sets. That is my plan for the next update in March on my birthday. So there will not be an update for, well, no, I can do another, um, yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, never mind. There'll be an update on the 22nd, but it's going to be bags. At least that's the plan. And then the 7th of March will be where when the Wizard of Oz collection drops. Do you think, or do you think I should just wait and drop it on March 1st? Yes. Yes, which one? The one that you're leaning towards. I don't know which one I'm... I will let you know. <laughs> That's what we'll go I know, with. I'm no help. You really are. I know. Um, so, again, I got into shop news before we finished our whip it. Way to go. Yeah. But anyways, so y'all let me know what you think. Also, um, fingering 100... The current base I have now, it let me know what y'all think of it because I love the yardage of it and I love that it's like squishy and poofy, kind of like this. But the softness of it is, I'm not 100% sold on. So I am thinking about finding a different base. It'll still be called Fingering 100, but it'll be different. So y'all let me know what you think. Um, if you are, if you like the current base or if you would want me to change it, it would still be a hundred percent superwash merino, but it would just be a different blend. I don't know how to not blend, but a different, I can't even think. I don't know what you're trying to say. I want it to be more like my DK 100 basically. And my current fingering 100 base is not as soft as my DK100 and my worst of 100 is as soft as my DK100. I want them to be more the same. So I want to replace the current fingering 100 base with a better mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So yeah, let me know what you think. But anyways, so these socks with the smaller needles will be cast, be cast on today. And I wanted to get them in Haya Haya's, but the Haya Haya's were more expensive and were going to cost me shipping. So I went with Chow Goose. And with it being this small, the pointiness of them is not going to be that big of a deal. So I prefer my Haya Haya's, but I'm afraid that like a size zero Haya Haya would probably really poke a hole in my finger. Which I have poked holes in my finger before with my Haya Haya. So... Um, are you want to add anything to whip it, whip it good before we just pretend like we haven't talked about anything in shop news yet and move on? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't, I don't have anything else to add. Okay. So. Okay. Well then, it's time for shop news. You don't want to say it with me this time? No, you got on to me last time. I got on to you last time because you said it before me. Oh. So either say it with me <laughs> or don't. Okay. So, can you quit rubbing your pants? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've, I've got a, a tight muscle in my leg. Oh. In my leg. When do you not, though? Never. Like, he literally cannot stretch his leg out completely. I can, too. When you're sitting up. I just can't do it when I bend over. Yeah, his knee has to still be bent. And, like, we've tried to stretch it out where I, like, push it so it can be straightened. And it it's, like, nope. 
Makes me laugh. Because it hurts so much. It hurts so bad. Him and his son, oh I my goodness. I end up laughing at it. They hurt themselves and they laugh. Tell me how ridiculous well, that we're, is. We're like toddlers in that if a toddler bumps their head on something, you don't rush to them like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, are you okay? No, you laugh and they laugh. If you rush to them and you're like, oh no, then they're, they're like, oh, mommy and daddy are freaking out. I should cry. That's not what we did when our kids bumped their head. Too. No, I did not laugh. I did. And it kept them from crying as much. <laughs> and it got them back to playing sooner. So, in shop news, <laughs> um, I am the dyer and bag maker behind Cherry Pie Cottage on Etsy. Um, I have two pre-orders going on right now. Obligatory Valentine, which is only up till Valentine's Day. Um, it's my Valentine colorway. It's what I knit... My Maritimo tea out of. Uh, I do not have a skein of it right now. Um, and I forgot to grab my sweater. I was going to grab my sweater so you could see how it knit up. But the other one I have is, was Sorry. day 23. I have to get up again. Okay. I do have shot news, by the way. Okay. You go ahead. You said you didn't. I know I said I didn't, but I did. So, um... Words. You got me off track. Maritimo. Oh, day 23 of my 2019 Christmas advent calendar, which was white Christmas based. Um, this one is G. I wish I was back in the army. And this is DK tweed. And this is fingering sock. And I dyed it up on a tweed and I dyed it up on fingering sock so you could see how it shows up on both bases. So this is up for the month of February only, and then it goes away forever. So if you like it and you want a full skein of it, you better grab it now. Um, but yeah, so this is G. So that is the scene that it, this skein was inspired by, or that part of the song. So, but. So I have those two pre-orders up. Obligatory Valentine, the last day you can get it is February 14th, and then it goes back into the vault until next year for Valentine's. So probably around January of next year. And then this one is only up for February. What? We have a vault? Words, hon. Really? Oh, okay. Y'all. <laughs> He's ridiculous. <laughs> You really are ridiculous. I know. I love you though. But you love me. Yes, I do. So, and these are only up for the month of February. And you can get them on all of my bases, including the current Fingering 100 base. So, and then a new one for March will be put up. And I'm not putting a poll up for that one. I'm just going to pick it because my birthday month and I can. I do what I want. Um... <laughs> And let's get to the actual shop update. So this shop update this time was unicorns. And if y'all don't know what unicorns are, they are what I call my one-of-a-kind skeins, just because unicorn sounds much more fun. Than ook. Yeah, better than ook. So these are unicorns. Um, finger and sock. Yeah. Okay, so these are unicorn 001. <laughs> that way, when such people, a romantic name, isn't it? The unicorn um, zero zero. Well, I did it like that because the last time I put unicorns up, like a lot of them, <laughs> I didn't have. They were all just called unicorn, but they all had separate listings. This way, I know exactly which one to ship. I mean, I have the picture, but it just makes it easier. So, this is unicorn zero zero one on, and it is um, my sock set. So you get a fifty gram skein of the unicorn. And you get a 20 gram skein of a mini. I did all white minis this time because I ran out of time to dye up the minis. And yeah, only had three. So, but 001. <laughs> Just sounds like a 
like a planet that some scientist discovered. I discovered Unicorn 001. <laughs> but I also have it on just fingering sock. And there's only one each of these. So, so on fingering sock. And there is one on DK sock too. And I'm really sad that I didn't write any of these down. Because these unicorns, the ones that have numbers after them, are ones that I'm just playing like in the die pots. I got like new dies or I just want to see how something's going to turn out. And I don't really want to think and write it down. So I just take some color and I throw it on this game. Or if I have like leftover die from another batch and I just throw it on this game. So that's what these are. Um, the next one is Unicorn 002. <laughs> you thought Unicorn 001 was exciting. Yeah. This one was an experiment. And I really love the way it came out, but it's not the die, it's not the technique I want to use. So, um, this one, I have it in sock set. I have it in fingering sock. And I have it on DK sock. So, this one is one that I like the color combinations. And I know what colors I use, but I don't like the way I did it. So, I, the, these colors all together will come back. And the dog's barking. Yeah, I hear her. So, I'll go let her in. it's dyed in the way that, like, my, like, where it fades. And it's one of those. I just didn't like the way that the color showed up on the skein, I'd want, I want it like more completely covered and no white spots. So this was just an experiment to see how these dyes would show up. So I like it, but I don't like it enough to keep, to continue to do it this way. So there is 002. Now this one is 003 and I had it on fingering sock. But as I was winding it, I took a picture of it and I sent it to my dear friend, Laura, with the yarn, crochet and hoovian. And I said, I know you're not buying yarn right now, but this just really made me think of you. Expect, you know, just kind of like, hey, look what I did, isn't this pretty? And again, I can't, I want to try and remake this, but I can't because this was leftover dye. So, um, and I don't know the measurements, I just poured. But um, she said, yeah, mine. So she bought the fingering sock before I even listed it in the shop. So I have it on the sock set. And oh so if she already bought it, why are you? Because still I still have, I, she bought the fingering sock one. Oh. These other ones are in the shop. Okay. So I don't have it on fingering sock. So, hi Laura. But I have it on sock set, which I really, really thought about keeping this one for me. And I didn't, I put it in the shop, I was good. And I have it on DK sock. So then these other three are ones that just did not come out of the dye pots correct. Um, this one is a is unicorn is a unicorn snow flurries. This is one I dyed, but it like I don't know if y'all can see it. It has like a slight, where is it? like a slight pink tinge and we I don't have a clue where the pink came from yeah I don't think y'all can see that but it's just barely there and I don't know if y'all can see it or not but anyways other than that it's it's fine it just has some pink on it instead of and it's not supposed to have pink on it so that one's in the shop. Um, this one was falling leaves, but I added the wrong color. Instead of brown, I put black on there. I don't know why I grabbed the wrong color or something. So this one is falling leaves unicorn. And then this one is an apple bobbing unicorn. 
So this was actually the original skein and I was gonna keep it from myself and then decided not to. So it is a one of a kind. Um, but yeah. And then lastly, I have two DK sock mini sets in a blue. Um, the blue is called Breeze, Clouded, and Violet. So there is only two of these sets, but you get all three of them, all three colors, and they're 20 gram DK sock skeins. So our battery's dying. I see that. Talk faster. So I'm going to keep talking, um, and if it dies, <laughs> we'll plug it in and try again. Um, but let's talk about the admins. Um, is that still part of your shop news? Yes. Okay. Um, so that was the shop update. February 19th, the um, advents for Halloween will be coming out. The theme is Nightmare Before Christmas. It is 12 minis and a full skein. So you get 13 colorways. And these will all be brand new to the shop. Never, ever been there before. And this movie is his very, very favorite holiday movie. <laughs> Not Christmas. Christmas movie. Holiday. Um, but they will be going up pre-orders for it February 19th. They will be up through mid-April. Is it still good? You pushed it too far. It needs to go that way a little bit. Sorry if he's making y'all dizzy. I'm going to quit talking until we fix this so I can cut this part out. Now it's too far that way. Right there. Good? Or is it drifting? No, it's good. I told you to stop long before. So uh, that way when it drifted, it was perfect. <laughs> it's plugged in? Yes. It's charging? Yes. Okay. okay. Sorry about that for everybody watching because may or may not have cut that out. Yeah. So, okay. um, with these advents, what do you think, mid-April for the pre-orders before I take them down? I think so. Okay, so let's say April 15th. <laughs> tax day. Tax when day. your taxes are due. Um, <laughs> February 19th through April 15th. Um, and if I need to, I might extend them a little bit further, but as of right now, April 15th. You will have several options. You can get 20 gram DK sock, 20 gram fingering sock, or you can get them on fingering sock 50 gram skeins. So you will have three options to order. Um, there will be some extras. There's not going to be 12 extras, I don't think. But there will be some little bits and bobs. Um, I'm going to get him to pick those things out because he knows the movie better than I do. Uh -oh. Or help me. He's also going to help me dye the colorways too. Mm. We've got them all named. The ones that we want to do and a general idea. Um, there's one that he came up with all by himself, which I'm pretty excited about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I'll be looking for those because those will probably be, um, pre-orders will be up before we record again. Yes, they will. So, We're not going to show the colorways. No, no. Before, okay. But be just. It's going to be uh, like a standard advent where yeah. you get what you get. And, right. Okay. And these will ship out on October 1st, you think? Yeah. yeah, October 1st, because you'll need them at the end of Halloween, right? Or should I do them beforehand? I would I would probably send them out mid-September. Okay. That way they have them starting, you know, at the beginning of October. If it's international, I'll ship them September 1st. If you're U.S., it'll be September 15th. There we go. So, but all that information and stuff will be in there. So... There you go, guys. I'm excited. And then I'm also doing Christmas Advents again. Um, need to sit down and figure out all the colorways and stuff before I tell you all the themes. But one of them you're going to have to help me with, too. Okay. I'm going to have a 12-day and a 24-day. With um, lots of options. Mm -hmm. That is my plan. So, but there you go. 
Now it's time for the tail end. Wait, I have shop news. Oh, you have shop news. Sorry. Hmm. Scratch that. Not tail end. Shop news. All right. So, I am the maker, designer, and head spin master for uh, Goblin King Designs on Etsy. Um, and head marketer. That needs to be fired. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible, horrible marketing director. <laughs> he wants to hire me and I keep saying no. Yeah. So, um, I was seeing this a lot on Instagram, but they, TJ Maxx, I don't know who all has TJ Maxx near them, but they have these super, super sweet olive wood charcuterie boards or cheese boards or whatever you want to call them. Uh, I already have that one marked on that side, so I know where to cut. But um, it's solid olive wood and... Not pre-treated or anything. Not pre-treated. I mean, um, it might be. I don't know. But I have like a waterproof. Yeah. But... But I am cutting these into pin blanks. So olive wood makes just absolutely gorgeous pins. And I got... Eight out of, the light, out of the other one that I cut up. Eight blanks out of the other one. This one, probably going to get about the same amount. But I'm really excited about that. So if y'all want an olive wood pin, hit me up on Instagram. I love this live edge. Yeah, the, the live edge there. And the live edge can be saved and combined with resin to make a, a dual medium pin, mm -hmm. which I think is awesome. But if y'all want a an olive wood pin, hit me up on Instagram and let me know, and I'll put up a special listing for you guys in uh, Goblin King Designs. So, you know what I want? What do you want? I want a live end table, like yeah, one that's got the the, the live, live ends on it, live yeah. edge. Oh, I love that look, and mm. I want a table. I have one over here, but. And it's Not made, with live edge. Right. It's made out of an old door. Yeah. As the top. Like a cabinet door. The legs are just super wobbly and mm -hmm. I'm just afraid it's going to fall at some point. <laughs> so, yeah. I love it. I just need... I think I'd rather have that. Mm -hmm. I'd rather you make me one. But, but, yeah, I saw a lot of people on Instagram posting about the olive wood cutting boards. Mm-hmm. I was like, I have to get some, and I went, and they had two really nice ones with a lot of uh, burl grain in there, and it just looks awesome. Looks like the bottom side of Texas. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> so like, El Paso is going to be over here, uh -huh. Houston over here, yeah, a little bit. Very, very tip of Texas. Yeah, Brown, Brownsville, down by my finger. Golf. Yeah. Right here. So. Yeah. No, golf is over here. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought I said. Did I not? No. no. You put it on the Didn't Mexican side. It'd be the Rio Grande. Sorry. But that, that's my shop news, shop update. So, again, if you want an olive wood pin, let me know. Um, I'm going to be getting some new blank side or new kits. Um... It'll probably be mostly slimline, the standard one that I do, but let me know. I like the chunkier ones. I know. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's time for the tail end. Wah wah. No buttons. Nope. Mostly because we're both wearing house pants. <laughs> <laughs> so. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um. Good grief! It's already three o'clock. It is February 8th. Yes. Yes. February 8th. Should have said that at the beginning, but we did it. Oh, well. So, yeah. Does it really make a difference what so, day it is? Mm, yes, for people watching in the future. Mm -hmm. It's February 8th, 2020. <laughs> Everybody has clear vision. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. He didn't tell any dad jokes this one. So I had to put one in, even though it's really dumb. It really is. <laughs> Not as good as my bobcat joke. 
Your bobcat joke was not good. I thought it was. It was hilarious. There's one I want to do to you. Uh -huh. Oh, let me do it real quick. Y'all may have already seen this one, but. Okay. Okay. See? What is that? What is it? I want to say butterfly. Yes. And what is this part of the butterfly? The wing? Yep. Okay. I'm going to need two thumbs up. I honestly don't know where she's going <laughs> with this, guys. Okay. Now, say that part ten times really fast. Wing, 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 wing. Hello? <laughs> that copies off of somebody else's paper. Hmm. Guess. Copycat? Hmm. A cheetah. But <laughs> This by no means was an original. I saw this by somebody else I follow on okay. Instagram. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> but sadly, that is the end of you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> You're only mad because you didn't do it. <laughs> so, go to Facebook or Ravelry. We have a group on both. Both are called Cherry Pie Cottage. Um, we have our cow running. You can go in and just say, hey, y'all. <laughs> hey, y'all. Um, we have a thread specifically on Ravelry called Hey, y'all. Um, but on Facebook, just go in and comment, and I will see it faster than I will on Ravelry. Um, I'm not on Ravelry as often. Um, I just don't anymore. But, and Instagram is really the best place to get a hold of me. Um, yeah, so also when I get a private message or a DM on Instagram, it, I get a noise on my phone, so I see it like usually immediately unless I'm busy and not near my phone. Um, same thing with Facebook Messenger too. So, but yeah, go in and join our Facebook group and our Ravelry groups and or our Ravelry group. We are doing the cow in both. You're up for prizes for both. So. Here on YouTube, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, share this video. Tell your friends about us. Uh, spread the word. Once we get to a thousand friends on YouTube, then mm -hmm. we're going to do another giveaway. Yep, and we'll be able to do YouTube lives again on yes. the phone. Which we're really excited about. I know about. people don't like our lives. Yeah, but if you catch it, if you like, we announce it because we have a lot more friends than we did before the last time that's we did true it. That's true, That's true, too. So, but that's why we haven't been doing lives because we can only do it on my computer and the, it's awful. Mm -hmm. So, but do you have anything else to add before we sign off? I don't think so. Okay, then. God is good. Read your Bible. Bye, y'all. Bye.